being close to. So this is just a matter of substituting those values in and then just giving that decimal approximation. So you're putting whatever this is into that equation. So like for instance, it'd be 10 over 10 plus two is the first one. So 10 over 12. Um, and you're gonna keep doing that. Oops. So then you're gonna do 100 over 102. And you're gonna kinda keep, uh, like it'll get you guys closer and closer to um, the number it's approaching. And so what you're supposed to start noticing is it's probably getting really close to one. So that's when they're asking for the limit in part B. It's probably approaching one, and then the horizontal asymptote is one. You didn't ask for B and C, but we can talk about it, it's fine. Then um, in 2A, they give us this um, trig function, and they want the limit on the left and right side of the graph. So again, grab, like you don't know what the sine of x over x is. I mean, I wouldn't. Like, unless I'm like currently in that chapter, I wouldn't know either. So, um, I should bookmark decimals up here. Oh, there it is. I know some of you guys pointed out you can just type in sign, but then we have to divide that by x. So, so sometimes you have to play with it to make sure um, it's getting to be the way you want it to be. So um, we talked yesterday about, I think it was a cosine or sine function that just waved back and forth. And so that one had no limit. This one actually does have a limit. So if you follow it down the line, you're going to see it keeps getting closer and closer to zero. So um, if you guys look as we go this way, you now it oscillates, they say, like, so over the top and bottom to the left towards zero, and same thing, or to the right and then to the left. So it's approaching zero on either side. So that's going to be our limit. And then it says, for what values is g within point zero zero one of the limit? And we talked about this yesterday. Is basically like, how far down the line do I have to go where I'm getting something that's like so so close to zero? Um, so you're basically looking for where does the function equal point zero zero one? And you have to go down the line. Now this one was kind of a rough one. I probably shouldn't have had. Or I guess this is their worksheet. It, it was. You had to go pretty far down the line. I think you had to go down to like a thousand. I would not have you go that down the, that far down the line. Um, so I'm sorry about that. That it ended up being um, so so extreme. So um, I'd probably have it be something a little bit larger of a number. But it ended up being a thousand or negative one thousand. So kind of a bad question there. Then it asks about even, odd, or neither. So. Even, odd, or neither. Now, you're not super comfortable probably with sine functions, so this one might have been a little bit tougher. We have to try different values in for our sine function. Um, so I do like the sine of, like you might have to play around with this a little bit, because if you do, um, where are my functions in our trade? It's like the sine of, oh, it wanted to, it did the sine of 46 there. Um, how about like the sine of 1? And I'll show you guys. Some of these are kind of goofy. So like the sine of 1, um, you get an outcome there. And then we can divide that by 1, and that would be that number. The sine of negative 1, we're going to check and see is it the same number. Oops. How do I do negative 1? Sorry, I have my goofy calculator up here. No. Well, we'll do that. 
negative 1, and then sine, and then I divide it by a negative 1, it ends up being the same function again. So if I put a positive and a negative 1 in there, I get the same outcome either way. So um, it ends up being an even function, I believe, right? Because it, um, it has, um, has the same outcome for um, positive or negative. Then number six. So let's talk about number six. The drawing they had is not the only one you can have. It says sketch a graph of an odd function f that is a relative maximum at negative two, such that the limit on the right side of the graph is going to be negative one. So I already know it's got a head towards negative one on the right side of the graph. So I know that happens. And then if x is negative two, there's going to be a relative maximum. Oh, so then I think we have to be above, right? Hold on a second. So let me use, um, so our limit is negative 1. So I'm going to put a line here. That's that asymptote. That would be where that would be. Um, there's a relative maximum at negative 2. And we want it to be an odd function. This is a tough one. So I don't understand that you guys um, ended up struggling with this one. Um, because if I have a maximum and it's headed towards negative 1, I think I have to be above the graph, right? Maximum at negative 2. Um, how I understood, yeah. how I understood was, that, was that the highest point of the graph was located at negative 2, negative 1, or negative Thank you. 
limit on the left side of this graph is what? This way. Mm -hmm. Looks like it's going to be zero, right? So it looks like it's headed towards zero. And then the right side, what's it doing? Infinity. Infin yeah, so it's going to be at a positive infinity. And you don't have to write positive. Oops. A little more details there. But then when I flip this, and I go at five to the negative x power, 
What does it do to our limit? Yeah, it flips it. So as we, the left side of the graph is at positive infinity, and then the right side is headed towards zero. So the right graph is when something's growing really big, really fast, and that's like an example um, that exponential growth, like you talk about like a gossip, like a like a rumor that you t you're like, oh, I'm only going to tell one person, and then now it's just become this big mess. Um, that's exponential growth. Maybe wish that <laughs> rumors worked like exponential decay, that it starts big and then gets small. Um, exponential decay is like if you bury something in your backyard. Um, that sounded really oh. weird. <laughs> I mean, like in the landfill, something's breaking down. <laughs> um, so, like, I, for instance, we used to have a dog that would always bury her bones, and like she would come back out like months later, and the bone would be disgusting. But like, it breaks down pretty quickly, fast, and then it really slows down. So, exponential decay is exactly what it sounds like. Is that um, it still is there for a long time, but it breaks down quickly initially and then um, kind of levels off maybe. So growth versus decay is something we're going to kind of discuss today and kind of determine um, whether or not um, our situation is a growth or decay situation. And um, exponential graphs show up a lot more places than we realize. Um, and I mean, actually in nature, as much as that seems strange, that is probably a place that ex I remember I had students that took at Cedarburg they took, um, they had AP environmental science and they all came to me with their exponential equations that they were struggling with because they hadn't taken like a pre-calc class before. So um, our exponential function, like the most basic one here, now we can add or subtract things, or like yeah, we can add or subtract things to this value, these values. So a times b to the x power. So now our variable is an exponent. So exponential function. So that's like kind of things get really big, really small, really fast. So this first one here, they're giving us some values for these um, for this the answer to this function. So they give us 6, 12, 24, 48. So something's happening like to these numbers to make them get bigger faster. So what I'm going to suggest here is if you're ever unsure, like kind of just checking here and seeing, uh, I'm just going to call this the first one, second, third, fourth. And that's going to be my output here. So what's happening to get to the next number? We're trying to write an equation here for this. It's being multiplied by 2 over and over again times 2, times 2, times 2. So that number that's repeating, that's probably going to be our v. So it's going to be 2 to some power. What is my board doing here? 2 to some power. Well, that obviously doesn't give me the answer, because 2 to the first power is not 6. 2 to the second is not 12. So that, but I'm going to tell you that 2 comes from the fact that we're multiplying by 2 over and over again. Any thoughts on what I can do to 2 to the x power to make it be 6, make it be 12, make it be 24? So like 2 to the first power is 2, 2 to the second is 4, 2 to the third is 8, 2 to the fourth is 16. Anyone see it? What do you think? Stuff going up. 
I bet that in some way you actually were doing the same thing we were doing. It's just you were probably doing it in two separate steps or so. You know, like so. It, there might be an easier way. And just so you guys know, in our homework on a test, this would probably be the toughest type of equation we'd get. Um, the homework problem is not this tough. So um, being able to make an equation based off of our outcomes is going to be part of what we're doing today. All right. Um, so continuous change model is essentially um, kind of anytime you have um, exponential growth or decay that something's continuously changing and exactly what the name sounds like, but that means that like it's buried in the ground or like um, when I was in high school, we did a fruit fly experiment, which sounds awful, and it was, um, we read fruit flies and we found out they exponentially grow and all of a sudden we had like thousands of fruit flies, super. Um, and so that was exponential growth and we didn't change anything about that continuous change, they just keep having babies. So. Um, this continuous change model is a formula that we're going to use today. And I'll explain what everything is. Now, depending on the textbook you look up or you go online, you might see a different formula. So, I've seen this a few different ways. Like, different letters used and stuff, but the same idea is there. So in this case, B stands for the beginning value or the starting value. R is the rate of growth or decay. But it's going to be written a percent as a decimal. Now the rate, if it's positive, it's going to be growth. That means it's getting bigger. But sometimes you see like there could be a decay and like things go down. T is time in years. And then the A of T is just the time at the, or like the total amount at the end of however many years that is. So the A of T is the final amount or after how many years. Now when I put these in order, or when I put these questions on the sheet, I put them on the order of mistake, so I'm going to actually do example two last. It's actually the toughest one on here. Um, I don't know why I put it where I did. Um, so let's flip over. Let's actually do um, letter, um, let's actually do number four and finish number four and then we'll take a break. Okay. Now again, you'll see how old our textbooks are when our data comes up here. So it says, the table below lists the number of Americans in thousands traveling to foreign countries other than Mexico and Canada. So um, 1970, some of their starting data, and then like obviously like, like not the most accurate, or not the most current data. Um, but they want us to, just so I have this data in front of me here. All right, so they want us, they said, use the continuous change model to write a formula for the number of American travelers T years after 1970, assuming an annual growth rate of 5.7%. Actually, maybe we'll just start with this first one. I feel like I'm going to tell you guys, so we'll, we'll just do this first one here. So let's, or like the first two, maybe. Um, so what's our starting value? Because we're using... A of T equals B, E, R, T. Oh, real quick, what does the E stand for? Does anyone know? I didn't list that. Do you know what E is? It's actually a number in your calculator. If you guys look, it's probably near pi. Um, but E is similar to pi. So 
Um, it's just a value that like works with exponential functions. So the e is not like a value we have to figure out. We already know that. So what's our starting value in this case for letter A? What's our starting value? Five, yeah, 5,260. Because they're telling us we're starting at 1970. That's where this data started from, this 1970. There's our B value. Do we have our rate? It's the 5.7 years is our rate, 5.7 years. And I simply have to write it as a decimal. Do you know how to write a percent into a decimal? Yeah. What do we do? Yeah, two places, because percent means per 100. So we're going to move this over two times. So I have my B, I have my rate, which is 0 0.057. And then, so we just want to, right now, they just want us to put that into an equation. We don't actually know T yet, or we, we don't care about T. So A of T equals B, which is 5,260 times E, and we'll show what that is in our calculator, 0 0.057, and we'll put a T here. It said, use your formula to predict how many Americans will travel abroad in the year 2010. Is that T? Would we put that in for T? T is the time in years. Would 2010 make sense? No. Not quite. What would it be? Of years since yeah, the number of years since 1970. So 1970, yep, is 20 years, you know, behind 2000. So it'd be 40 years. So in this case, we're to put T is 40. That's what that's what I said. I, I meant it this book, but that's what I meant. 20 years. Okay, sorry. So we have 40 is from 70 to 2010. So we have 5,260 times E, 0 0.057, and then times T, which is 40. So this is a matter of you guys finding this in your calculator and finding that E value. E is about 2.7 if you're curious, but we want like the exact E value. So you're basically typing this in. Are you guys finding E? It might be in the math menu if you can't find it. Oh, it's not like, um, it's not the E. It's it's not this E. It should be a lowercase E. Right by the four? Yeah. Yeah. There's you see a little E to the S. They said a lot of you said next to the number four, but we don't can't find it. It should be like fifty one thousand or something. Yeah. I think. I think it should be something like fifty one thousand.
What do you guys get? 9,000 what? 301. Okay. Now it says, does this figure agree with the information in the chart? Where does that, where would that show up in the chart? It should be 1980, right? Because this is 70, this would be 80, this would be 10 years past. So what this is saying is that this is some data. They were, they were also using a growth rate. It doesn't, like, so maybe one firm figured out it was 5.7, then maybe that was some, like, data from a company or something like that. They're close, they're not exact, um, but it's trying to show that, um, that that equation may not have matched that table. So they're not exact um, because of the fact that maybe these were two independent sources or something like that. So maybe it's somewhere in the middle, maybe one is right, one is wrong. We're gonna come back and do the other two questions and we'll take a break here. Um, we have announcements to do as well, but we can take a little outside break. Do we want an activity while we're out there or no?